Hi everybody, welcome to Makeup with Michelle. And today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm going to be telling you about my life and my story. <laughs> this is basically like my testimony a little bit. Um, but let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing is my name is Kayla and my middle name is Michelle. So I like to call myself Makeup with Michelle because like makeup starts with M and my middle name starts with M. So it just made sense. It kind of gives it a little ring to it. Makeup with Michelle, you know. Um, but I'm 20 years old. I live in North Carolina. And let's see, I have a sister and I have a brother and I love pets. I love any kind of pets. I actually have two beta fishes. Um, one is blue and like purple and the other one is like red and purple. So yeah, my favorite color is actually purple. Um, it varies though, like every other month. Um, but I've stuck with purple for a while now, mostly because purple stands for domestic abuse, violence, and stuff like that. And I've kind of went through that a little bit. Um, not really that much, but I kind of went through that in one of my relationships. Um, so I can relate to it a lot. Plus, I saw my mom get abused growing up. Um, by my father so that took a toll on my life and I feel like that's why purple is such a beautiful color because even though it stands for that you know you're free now you're out of that control of that person you know you're out of that whole damaging relationship and lifestyle and it's something that sets you free you know it really sets you free um, sorry, <laughs> I have something like on my lips or something. Sometimes when I talk too much, I get like saliva or something. It's like gross. Um, but okay, one, this is the baddest part of my life. Um, so I just want you to really listen and really just, um, I don't want you to feel sorry for me because everyone goes through things in life, but I just want you to sympathize with me and kind of have empathy and just, you know, just listen, you know, listen to my story and realize that no matter how bad your life is right now, you could be, you could be exactly like me. You can make something out of your life and not have had anything to keep you going because I know how that feels and I'm a Christian so I believe in my God <laughs> and uh, I just want to give a moment of thanks to my God because you've always been there for me and you're amazing and you know even on my bad days and you still love me and you're there for me so thank you Lord and if you're not religious it's okay with me I'm very open-minded um, you know, and I respect all that. Um, but one thing, you know, that really triggered my childhood is probably not having my dad around. Um, when I was 12, my dad actually passed away. He killed himself, he hung himself. Um, so that was one thing that was very damaging to my life. Um, you know, I really had to go through life like that, wondering what if I could have done this? What if I did that? Would he still be here? Um, and you can't really think like that. Um, my dad was actually on drugs really bad. Um, I have no idea what kind of drugs, but it was really bad. Um, he used to abuse my mom a lot, and I told him off for that when I got older and he wanted to see me more and I actually want to be in my life I told him off for that I told him like why do you want to come in my life now after you abused my mom you hurt our family you did all these things to us that we didn't deserve and I think that's what really killed him inside because of the guilt but also the drugs drugs will really mess you up to the point where you don't care about yourself anymore you are not yourself when you're on drugs um, you know, my dad wasn't himself. Like, he would cry and do the crying game and say, like, oh, he's so sorry and stuff. But 
Uh, no, he wasn't really sorry. No, he wasn't sorry. He would go to church. He would do the church scene as well. He would go to church and act like he's a brand new person, but no. No. Like, you can't just fix it and say, God, fix me. No, you have to fix yourself before God can intervene with your life. You know, you have to do for yourself before he does for you. Um, but, you know, um... I might cry in this video, but it's okay. It makes me a stronger person, and I want people to actually see the real side of me. Uh, I don't really tell, I mean, I tell people about this, you know, but they don't really understand. Until you lose a parent like that, you don't really understand. Um, I mean, you can relate, but you can't really understand somebody because you're not in the same position. You're not in their life. You're not them. So nobody can actually understand anyone's story. You can just relate to it. Um, but he was on really bad drugs. He always stole the car, so sometimes my mom couldn't get to work. Um, like, it would be so bad, like, my mom would have blood running down her face, and like, um, I remember just so many times that we had to call the police and everything, and it was just really horrible. Um, and it's kind of sad when you grow up, and the only thing you really know how to do is call 911 repeatedly over and over and over and over. And that's like the only phone number I knew and could remember. And it's like traumatic experiences, you know. You know, when he's beating, you know, when he was beating the crap out of my mom. And I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I gotta go to the phone. I gotta hurry, hurry, hurry. You know, you know, it's kind of like nights I would lay in my bed and wonder if he was gonna kill my mom that night. You know, um, just things like that. Um, let's see, what else? Um, that was a big major change for me in my life because when I was in middle school, like I went back to middle school, he died in middle school, he died when I was in middle school, so I went back to school and like no one said anything, no one asked like how are you doing, no one asked like or said anything to me, I guess they didn't know how to talk to me about it, but I didn't have any friends, sorry, my sinuses are really messing with me today, I didn't have any friends, I didn't have anyone to talk to about it. My mom was kind of bitter, you know, at my dad, of course, you know, that would happen because, like, that's a man who, like, you, lo you loved, you know, and he beat you and did all these things to you. And, um, she wanted me to have a dad. She didn't want me to just be dadless, you know. She wanted us to have a happy life, but, like, it just didn't work out that way. Um, so... When he passed away, I just blamed myself a whole lot. But one thing I will uh, tell you that helps is uh, my dad didn't have a grave. He was actually cremated. Um, he didn't have a grave. Sorry, my foot is itching. Um, but I go to the cemetery and I get some balloons and I take them to the cemetery and I just talk to my dad there and I just act like he's right in front of me and I just release the balloons in the air. Um, and I just tell him that I love him and happy Father's Day and happy birthday. Even though my dad was on drugs, um, I learned to forgive him because he's gone now and he's still a person. He was still a person, you know, and I love my mom to death. Like, I wouldn't ever place, try to place my dad over her, you know, like, try to, put my dad on the pedestal but like you know I love both my parents either way my dad you know was good sometimes but like it was probably when he wasn't on the drugs and when he wasn't on a high so it was just really horrible and just having to go through life like that and just say like why does my dad love drugs more than me and it was just really horrible um and then seeing your parents fight all your life and seeing like your dad treat your mom like that, it's kind of like you don't really realize what love really is. You don't really know how to find it. You don't really know how guys are supposed to treat you and things like that. You learn as you grow up and get into more relationships and you realize how you're supposed to actually be treated by men or women, you know, whichever one you date. Um, but it does something to you, it really does, you know, because I used to see all the dads on Father's Day, um, you know, all the girls making Father's Day cards in school for the dad, and I didn't have anyone to make a Father's Day card for, so.
so you know just watching them be happy and see their dad and everything and never had a chance to do that um, but my mom used to play like chalk with me on the road and she would play like ball with me but most of the time she had to work and I remember asking my dad to play with me outside and like he would be like oh yeah I'll do it later and he never would so like I didn't have friends growing up when I did have friends um, they basically used me for my money like I had one girl that would come and just swim and jump on my trampoline and she would go to the other girl's house and like hang out with her like she would only hang out with me because I had a pool and a trampoline that she wanted to be in or be on and that was the only reason she hung out with me so yeah um let's see like sometimes we wouldn't have Christmas and like my dad would steal everything so yeah like sometimes we would come home and like from like the movies or come home from like shopping or somewhere and like our whole living room would be wiped out and you don't really experience that feeling until you actually see it in front of your eyes you're like oh my god everything that my mom had or like we had is gone like our whole house is empty so like you don't really know that feeling until it's gone uh yeah and then like you know it kind of hurt because I didn't have my dad anymore to actually um, my dad never came to my birthday parties you know I was getting older and I never saw him on my birthday parties I never got a card from his mother um, you know his family didn't really care about me um, or him really um, but like I never got a card from my dad saying happy birthday I never got anything you know the last time I saw him was the last time, you know, for, you know, until he killed himself. Um, and I just remember him saying, like, oh my gosh, you're so big and you're so beautiful now. And he was like, you know, I missed out on everything. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, you did. Like, where was you? No, where was you? Like, all the times, like, I needed you. Like... Where was you, like, on my birthdays? Like, where was you when, like, you know, I needed someone to talk to? Like, it still hurts because, like, you know, like, you really don't, you really don't realize, like, you really don't understand until, like, you're, you know, you're thinking, like, where was you at, you know? Um, the next thing would be, like, when I was, like, older, I was still trying to find myself. You know, you go through the emo stage, but then, like, I went through a stage of, like, my dad wasn't there, and I went through that stage, and I was, like, cutting myself, and I was, like, I can't take this anymore. Like, I didn't have no friends. I didn't have anyone to talk to. Like, my mom would, if I try to talk to my mom about my dad, she just still is really bitter, and she'll just say, like, he's a piece of shit. Like, I don't know why you still talk about him, things like that. Like, she'll cut him down a whole lot. But I try not to do that because, like, my dad's, like, I mean, my dad's my dad, so I can't help. I mean, you know, it's not like I chose, oh, this is my dad. Like, no, I didn't choose. <laughs> like, I didn't choose that, who my dad was. So, mm, yeah. But before my dad met my mom, like, no, before my mom met my dad, he was a pretty good person, but then, like, he was gambling, and, like, then that's when he started doing drugs a lot and stuff. Um, I think, like, after my mom had me, that's when, like, it started happening. But I really don't know. I think he did it before. But he would take me to, like, drug houses and stuff, and I could have been raped. I could have been sold for drugs. Um, anything. Um, I was actually supposed to be born with cerebral palsy when... I was a baby um, the doctor said because I wasn't walking I wasn't doing anything I wasn't lifting my head up like when I was crawling things like that I was actually supposed to have cerebral palsy but like um, my great-grandma prayed for me and they prayed that I would have like you know that I would be normal and that you know, I would actually be able to walk and things like that. So now I'm here. I'm actually, you know, like a cerebral palsy survivor, you know, basically. <laughs> um, 
let's see, another thing that's been traumatic, you know, would be like me trying to kill myself. Um, I've suffered with depression since I was probably like 13. I used to be on antidepressants, but I got off of them because they made me so tired. I couldn't do my homework. So I was like, well, forget it then. You know, I just won't be on them. But literally, it's been really hard to be without any kind of medicine or anything. Um, but I do pretty well, you know, now. But it just kind of settles in at night, you know, when you can't sleep. And I'm really sorry, like, my nephews are playing with the vacuum in there, and I don't know where their parents are, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, it just really, I don't know, it just really makes it really hard to talk about everything. And I just really, um... I don't know. I tried to actually stab myself. I actually took kind of, I've overdosed before. Not on anything like drugs or anything, like, like nothing serious. It was like, it was like ibuprofen, Benadryl, shit like that. Um, like, I don't know. I was being dumb and like, I wasn't thinking, you know, I wasn't really thinking about my life and, you know, I mean, which I look up shit before I actually do stuff like that. I don't know. Sometimes I don't, but sometimes I do, and I'm like, yeah. You know. Um, but I think one thing that really woke me up was when I overdosed, like, many different times, and, like, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I, like, I w it was hard for me to breathe. Like, I stopped breathing. Like, I was like, I was kind of like, I was like, so I stopped breathing for a little while, so I was like, Oh my gosh, like, what do I do? Like, um, yeah, it was really scary and I was like, God, please don't let me die. I was like, you know, I won't do this anymore. And so I stopped, um, you know, and then I got into a really bad relationship. And yeah, that was it from down, that was it downhill. Um, I was 19 and he was 18 and now I'm 20 and now he's 19 but <coughs> um, I met him online yeah um, I thought he was a really good person and he was you know to a certain point um, it was just a very toxic relationship for both of us and that relationship really messed me up and it probably messed him up too but I had to leave the relationship because I really feel like I tried my best I really tried my best to do everything I could for the guy um like he had some of the same problems I had um with his family and stuff like that and I don't know, I just thought that he could save me from all my problems and stuff and like I just run away with him and that's just how it was, like we were trying to run away from our problems and it just wasn't working, you know, um, but sorry, <laughs> like I'm like a cold or something, it's like so annoying, but you know, now Donnie okay but it's just a really bad thing to just talk about because there were so many times that he treated me like crap and when he treated me like crap I would treat him like crap so it was back and forth like all the time like I wasn't gonna let no one treat me like crap so like within like three months we broke up and I left him because I just couldn't take it no more. Like, I couldn't take crying all the time. And, like, because of what things he would say to me. Like, he would play around and joke about me dying and stuff. Like, he told me, like, to suffocate myself. And I am very suicidal anyway. So, yeah. And he would tell me stuff like, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's like... He was just, I don't know, I don't know, but the right word to be would probably be narcissist, narcissist, 
very narcissist personality and I don't think he ever wanted to go to therapy for who he actually was because he didn't want to find out. He wouldn't go to therapy like I told him I would go with him. He wouldn't go like yeah it was just a really bad relationship. Um, just things he would do and I have a video on it actually. Um, yeah like I have a video on it and it's actually like how to deal with toxic relationships I think but yeah I will totally put the picture of it in my video so you can actually see it um but Ooh. I'm sorry um, but we just had some of the same problems like he was really good physically he would open my door like he would take me to eat and stuff like that but at the end of the day it's not about what you spend on me and what you do for me it's about mentally as well it's about caring about one another not just trying to buy my love with money and stuff like and I told him that and I don't know like there was times where I was gonna leave sooner but like he would cry and tell me like not to leave and stuff and I really felt really bad and I never wanted to leave but I just didn't see him getting any better and I knew that he was taking everything out on me and I didn't want that to keep happening like I wanted the best for him you know like I wanted him to get better as a person like I really want him to actually find someone that he loves and I really want him to be happy and yeah like I want the best for him like I really do um, and I feel like that's my way of healing myself right now like I really want to see him happy someday and I really want to see him do something with his life like you know and he was very depressed like me as well so we were both depressed people and when you have a relationship like that it's very hard because you're watching one another sink into a deep black hole of depression so you're trying to he's trying to grab your hand and you're trying to grab his hand and it's really hard because you're both struggling and each day you feel like you don't even want to wake up and be alive so yeah yeah I don't know it was really hard for both of us um, which I'm not saying I'm perfect I probably did some stuff or said some stuff to him that might have hurt his feelings but like yeah you know you know I'm I'm pretty sorry for that I apologize for all that you know um, but I really hope the best for him I really do um, because it was just a bad relationship and I know that I'll have better ones and I'm happier now and yeah like I'm really happy <laughs> like I can't believe I just said all that but I did you know um, I can't believe I just said all that but it, it just hit me like I wanted to say it and wanted it to come out you know um, but I'm really proud of how far I've come. I have a friend, so if Jack, if Jack or Akeen is watching, <laughs> I just want to say thank you because you've helped me a whole lot. Like, you've listened to me over and over and over and over talk about my last relationship, and I just want to tell you thank you for being there for me. And you know talking to me and just making me feel like a really beautiful person because if it wasn't for you and God then I don't know where I would be so shout out to you and I love you <laughs> you're like my best friend and I'm just so happy in life right now because if I didn't have a king to kind of tell me that I could do everything. If I didn't have, you know, my grandma push me, if I didn't have God to help me have the confidence to get this job, 
um, you know, to get where I am in life, then I wouldn't be where I am right now. It's all about confidence and loving yourself, and you have to give your time. You have to give yourself time to heal. So that is a little bit about me. <laughs> I've been through a lot, so but I'm here now, and yeah. And there's a whole lot more about me, but I just wanted to share that much because not everyone is perfect and everything's going to get better from here on out and you just have to speak things into existence um let's see i don't really have anything else to say <laughs> like um about me i love purple my birthday is may 7th so i'm a taurus um let's see my great grandma passed away this January, so I was really close to her. Um, I'm a very outgoing, friendly person. I love people. Um, well, now I do. I love people. <laughs> but um, I do way better than I did back then, making friends. I'm really outgoing now. I used to be really shy and reserved, but um, now I'm like really working on all of that. So, yeah. Um, let's see. I have like cystic acne. It's like really bad. You can actually tell. Um, yeah. But I really don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so I have like cystic acne, and I've been dealing with that since I was like a adult. So, like, probably like 18 to 20 probably a 19 but it got really worse as I grew up little oh sorry that was really bad okay <laughs> okay as I got older it got really bad um but when I was younger it wasn't this bad at all I think it has something to do with hormones and just like getting older I don't know I don't know, but it's like really bad, like horrible, like big old bumps and cysts and everything. Like everything you can imagine, it's there. Yeah. Um, let's see. I've had my hair black. Um, I've had my hair blonde with caramel highlights. I've had my hair blonde. I've had my hair dark brown. Um, which is my natural color. My hair is dark brown, but it's like I had my hair like an ash brown, ash dark brown. I've had my hair purple. I've had my hair blue. I've had my hair like a light green. <laughs> so, so yeah, I've had my hair a lot of different colors. Um, let's see. Um, I'm plus size. Yeah, so I'm working on losing weight right now. So that's a big thing in my life right now um let's see I'm white <laughs> that's kind of easy to tell I guess um I might be mixed with something like I'm not mixed but like I might have like something that runs in my family maybe I want to do like that genetic testing thing like the ancestry or something like that just it would be cool to do um let's see I love fall um but I like summer because like summer I don't know summer is hot but it's like when my birthday is so like when the sun's out and everything I feel way better about my birthday coming up because <laughs> um, like who doesn't like their birthday you know um, let's see like I already told you how like anxiety and depression um, it's not something fine to live with like I'm not proud of that I'm not proud to say like I got depression like no it's like embarrassing I know I don't even like telling people about it really um because they think oh my gosh she's crazy like let me get away from her like no I'm not crazy I'm really sweet I'm really outgoing I'm really friendly but I just have problems like everyone else does so let's see I love makeup I love makeup a lot a lot a lot I want to be a cosmetologist and a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Um, 
I'm very creative. I really love to draw. I love art. Um, I love music. I love to sing. I love sports. My favorite sport is soccer. I love basketball. I love football. I love to hike. Like, I like walking. Um, hmm. I love fashion. I love to dress up and wear jewelry and try to figure out what kind of designs can I put with an outfit, things like that. Um, I love flowers. My favorite flowers are daisies. I love daisies. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't really like spiders, but I want to actually get a baby pet, baby pet tarantula because I want to see how they feel and I want to see if I could actually take care of it. I don't know. I'd be kind of scared. Like, if it got older and bigger, I would be like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like, it would be really, like, weird. I don't know. I gotta take a drink. Okay, so, yes. I'm not liking my drink. Mm. But, yes, I do drink sun drop. Yeah, sometimes. But I try to drink more water than anything. If I drink a cup of soda, then I drink a cup of water. So that's just how I do it. If I drink like like a whole bottle of soda, then I drink a whole bottle of water. So I try to equal it out so like it cancels out each other. Kind of like, yeah. But um, let's see. I'm working on my weight. That's one good thing. Um, I love Hello Kitty. Oh my gosh, I'm a fanatic Hello Kitty fan. Like, anything Hello Kitty, it's going in my room. <laughs> um, but I kind of got over that a little bit, but I'm still a Hello Kitty fan. Like, and deep inside, I'm still a Hello Kitty fan. Like, jewelry, blade, oh, jewelry, bracelets, anything. Yeah. If I could have a whole room that was Hello Kitty, I would. The walls... The dressers, toilet paper, anything, rugs, shoes, clothes, makeup, <laughs> makeup brushes. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, yeah, anything like that. I love the beach. Um, let's see. I don't know. There's a lot of things I could talk about. <laughs> um yeah so there's like plenty more so yeah if you guys have any questions so just let me know below and i will do like another about me video soon and maybe i can do like you know like numbers instead of like just on and on and on so yeah if you guys have any questions please let me know down below and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i would love to have you here and please click the notification bell beside the subscribe button for future uploads okay and thank you for watching i don't know what kind of song that was but bye